Please join me in reading the Holy Gospel from Mark chapter 10. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do uh, to, for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called to them and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord over it them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be a servant, your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave to all. For even the Son of Man came not to give, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. When I was younger, um, I used to make up definitions for words I didn't know. If there was a word I didn't know, I would look at the word and kind of see what word it looked like, and then I would kind of relate that definition to the word that I didn't know. And I did this um, early on for the word authority. I thought that authority was whatever the author wanted, right? I looked at it and I said, well, it's the personal choice of the author, right? You have personality and author put together authority. That's not that far off, not quite. Authority. Who gets to be in charge? Whoever does the work. In the Jordan home, uh, we've been without... This is a very embarrassing confession. I think confession is bleeding over into the sermon. Um, we've been without a dishwasher for about a year now. We've been without a dishwasher for about a year and a half now. My wife just corrected me for those of you who didn't hear it at home. Um, I know what you're thinking. You guys have jobs. We've seen you eat out. You're not that tight. Why don't you have a dishwasher? And I will tell you why. Because there are many people in my household who think they're authorities on dishwasher, but there is one person who is the true authority on all purchases and appliances. And that person is holding things up. Now, the husbands in my congregation right now are like, we need to have Wednesday night wings and save pastor. This is crazy, pastor. We need to take you out for beers. This is like the Mandalorian. This is not the way. This is not the way. <sighs> the authority on the dishwasher is the person who takes the responsibility on managing the dishes. And pastor, you're not even in the top three in your household. Maybe you're tied with your youngest daughter. Maybe. You might even be four. The person who does the work the person who serves, the person who sacrifices time and effort, that's the true authority. Think about it. I've come to realize that I'm not the authority on dishes in my household, or dishwashers for that matter. So the delivery is coming on April 3rd, uh, the day before Easter. We will have a dishwasher installed. 
goodness gracious. Congress overruled my veto. Unbelievable. One who serves is the first. The one who tries to sit in the seat of authority without the gift of service is definitely the least. Dictators are not in high demand. Jesus gives his disciples a great lesson. A great lesson. The ones who sacrifice and serve are the first round draft picks. Those are the greatest gift to the community. I can tell you from being a pastor for a decade and a half, this is very, very true. The servants in your church, the ones who make things happen, who God uses to advance his blessings, are the greatest gift. But your authoritarian dictators who try to manage from the peanut gallery, from on high. Those are the ones you hope will go into free agency. Just being honest. Do you understand what Jesus is saying to his future church? To his disciples who will lead? Do you understand what the last will be first and the first will be last is all about. If you want to be great, make a sacrifice and serve. James and John were really asking Jesus this question. They were asking, who is your second in command? When you go to be, you know, king, when, when we ride in on Palm Sunday triumphantly, who is your vice president? Is it me or is it my brother? Who's the next in line of succession? Of course, Jesus tells James and John, you have no idea what you're talking about. You have no idea what you are asking. If you knew, you wouldn't even ask it. My road of service leads directly to my death. The death that is coming on the cross. Humiliation before men. Dying a sinner's death. Innocent, but being persecuted. He describes the scene to them. A death and a resurrection is coming. This is something that the disciples did not understand. They didn't get it. This wasn't normal. They pictured themselves as coming into Jerusalem triumphantly and being great. Little did they know that Jesus would be arrested, flogged, put to the test, and crucified. All of his disciples abandoned him. Not one of them stood at his side when he was arrested, when he was taken through all of these trials, none of them were like, oh, now I want to be on your right hand. None of them did that. The one who ends up on Jesus' right hand is also hanging on a cross. The one who actually ends up on Jesus' right hand is the one who pleaded with Jesus. Remember me. When you come into your kingdom, take pity on me. And Jesus said to him, today you will be with me in paradise. What's interesting about this is that the same sort of thing is similar in the chapter that you're in right now. Mark chapter 10. If you continue on in your Bibles for one more paragraph, you'll find when they come to the gate of the city, I'll just describe it for you. 
they meet this blind man named Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus says, have pity on me. And Jesus heals him. He comes before Jesus, and he's healed. It's so fascinating. Because the people who followed Jesus around, who knew him best, were blind by what was coming. But this man, who asked Je Jesus humbly to pity him, to have mercy on him, could see. What is God doing in your life? What is the authority in your life? What is the authoritative and definitive bi biography that God is writing in your story? Is it the story of a humble servant who relies on Jesus to guide her through every step? Is it God directing and writing every episode? Who is the authority? Who is writing the story? Is it you? The world will tell you that you can do whatever you want to if you put your mind to it. That's almost in every kid's movie. Whatever you want, you can do it. You see that in almost every kid's movie. You can be anything you want. Gosh, I hope not. I'm not saying you should be motivated to try things. It's great. But I hope I'm not everything I want to be. Because some of the things I want to be are not good for me, and I can't see it at the time. What I want for myself is unusually naive and short-sighted. And I rarely know the consequences of my actions. No. It is our hope and our prayer to serve God in his kingdom. We gather to hear God's word. We come to receive the blessing of God's holy sacrament at the altar because we are a part of God's eternal story. This is our story. God, through Jesus Christ, is the author and the authority of our lives. Let that be this morning's prayer. Let that be every morning's prayer, Monday and Tuesday, each day of the week. Let us get up and pray, Lord, use me. Move me by the power of your Holy Spirit to serve you this day. I can't wait to see what you have in store for me next. Lord, what you have written for me, your humble servant, is what I want to be. I want to be your child. Move me by the power of the Holy Spirit to do your will. Amen.